Hi, I'm Skylar. And I'm Julie. And we're the media interns here at the Dairy Barn Art Center. We're here to give you a virtual tour of the contemporary Southeastern Ohio Ceramic Trail. This video will give you a taste of what you'll see along the way. Hey, Julie, you ready for a road trip? Let's go. Here we are at the first stop on the Contemporary Ceramic Trail, the Dairy Barn Arts Center in Athens, Ohio. You won't find any ice cream at this dairy barn. But what will you find? Our director, Jane, will tell you more. Let's go talk to her right now. The Dairy Barn Arts Center was founded in 1978 as a place to see, buy, and make art. And we are very excited about hosting the Contemporary Ceramics exhibit curated by Chuck McQueeny, Maritai Professor of Ceramics at Ohio University, and Brad Schwager, a professor of ceramics. They have collected the most contemporary artists in the ceramics field throughout the United States, and we are hosting up to three of their pieces here this fall. Now, Jane, you and I both know that Athens has a lot to offer, but can you tell our viewers why they should stop and visit the Dairy Barn? Athens has a rich history of uh, ceramics, whether it's the fine program that Ohio University has or the history of making bricks. The Athens block is famous to anyone that attends Ohio University or in the region. And they should come to Athens not only for the contemporary ceramics exhibit here at the Dairy Barn, but also Court Street, where they can enjoy local food, local art, and local music. The Dairy Barn not only has the ceramic exhibition, but we have a number of uh, workshops and special events that people can attend and they just need to check our website. But also we're going to have a ceramic marketplace in addition to our gallery shop where local artists will be able to sell more ceramics. So if you're interested in purchasing ceramics, we can take a little bit of Athens home with you. Here we are in the Nelsonville Public Square, heart of shopping and activities. Just a short walking distance from the Rocky Outdoor Gear Store, visitors will find themselves surrounded by work of local artists at places such as the Nelsonville Emporium. The Emporium is a working studio. We make pottery here. It's locally made art, which is mostly my friends, family, people of the area that I've grown to know and love. And then we um, are adding food to it. You can also buy books, um, t-shirts, we're kind of a, a collection of all kinds of great local things. Now, Nelsonville sits right between Hocking Hills and Athens. Is it worth it for people to make the stop here? Nelsonville is like a hidden gem. It's a really special place to kind of get off and see a part of history. The buildings are turn of the century. We have so much to offer for the clay corridor because we have Starbrick Clay. We have um, Hocking College, which has one of the top ceramic engineering programs in this area. Artwork that's created by the Starbucks is very popular right now, um, so it's exciting that people are embracing the history of Nelsonville with the Starbrick. And then you have the Nelsonville Emporium, and I, I believe right now we have over 15 uh, ceramic artists in here of all different venues, some doing raku, some doing hand building, uh, and I do wheel throwing. Pottery can obviously be used for decoration, but when combined with what your store sells, there's a lot more opportunity out there, right? This is a perfect place to come and maybe buy a mug, but also put a bar of soap and some local tea in it. You can use pottery as your basket, as your gift giving procedure. So it's like a starting point for a lot of people. We have a Nelson Folk clay body. It's a beautiful dark full of magnesium clay that looks like the historic bricks of the area. And then uh, you can buy your glazes, your brushes. Uh, we do a little bit of classes. We're kind of getting into the food ventures as well. But there's a lot to come and see. And usually there's somebody working in the studio when you come to the Nelsonville Emporium. So in the near future, how would you like to see Nelsonville expand? There's um, a lot of historic buildings that are still vacant. And we, we could use a bead store. We could use a bakery. If we can get these places to come in and then potters can make more pottery and artists can create more artwork, uh, the food places can serve more food, it's really, it's got a lot of potential. And while you're in Nelsonville, make sure you stop by the Starbrick Gallery, host of the 2015 Clay National Cup Show. Along the Contemporary Ceramic Trail, you need to stop in Nelsonville and visit Starbrick Gallery. We will be hosting our fourth National Cup Show, and we get cups from all across the country. We have renowned artists who have been our jurors 
and we expect to have over 50 cups from across the country and usually we have a big variety just everything you can imagine in a cup. It's amazing how every artist has a different interpretation of what a cup should look like. Everything from a tea bowl to amazing works of art that are more like sculptures than cups. Oh, all the cups are for sale and they're always reasonably priced. And what's nice is you can pick up a piece of art from another artist from across the country. Let's back up for a minute. Can you explain to us the history of the Starbrick Gallery and the Starbrick itself? I moved to Nelsonville in 2000 and I noticed so many beautiful, incredible storefronts empty. So I started talking to all my ceramic friends and said, do you have a place to sell your work? No, not really, you know. So we decided to open this place as a ceramic gallery. I decided on the name Starbrick as an honor, really, for the Starbrick history that is here in Nelsonville. And our clay just happened to fire to the consistency of granite. It's super strong. All those Starbricks that you see are over 100 years old. And they still have their design and their pattern. The reason we say they are world famous is if you visit other historic places in the country, you'll see the brick made from here. Indiana had so much star brick, they thought it was made there. They had people researching and trying to find out. We corrected them. <laughs> I make mugs, plates, sugar, creamers, anything you can imagine out of the brick pattern. So other than clay, what else can star brick in Nelsonville offer to visitors on the ceramic trail? If you're a ceramic pottery lover, you'll find plenty here. But we also have stained glass, we have painting, we have four fabulous woodworkers. So it's, it's just a real delight to come here and I think that we are really reasonably priced. We get that a lot from people who visit. Another reason to come to Nelsonville, Majestic Galleries will be reopened after our fire incident and we have a special artist in the front of their gallery. Her name is Danielle Armbruster, and she is a very gifted sculptor. So you won't want to miss that show. And then uh, every month, we have something called Final Fridays. It's the last Friday of the month. And that is when we open our new shows. We have a new show every month. Our grand opening reception for the Cup Show will be on a final Friday, September. On those evenings, we stay open till 9.30. People stop through Hawking Hills for camping and their beautiful scenic hiking trails. That's very true, Julie, but did you also know that there's an art scene here? Really? Yeah, our friend Audrey at the Tourist Center can tell us all about it. Come on. Besides our hiking, which we have seven, nat seven parks and two um, natural preserves with spectacular views, waterfalls, great hiking, we have a really talented group of artists in the area from wood carving to leather work, glass work, pretty much any kind of medium that you would expect an artist to do, we have here. At that Hocking Hills Dining Lodge, we have our art market there, and you can purchase um, all kinds of wares there. We are open Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. We have our fall show in, at the end of September, last full weekend in September. It's a all handcrafted items. It's a great place to uh, come and purchase things. just outside Arts and Clay on Main. For the visitor of the Ceramic Trail looking to get the hands-on experience, the place to be is right here. Guests are invited to sit down, choose their own glaze, and paint their item however they want. The shop takes care of the rest. And for the experienced artist, the shop offers studio space just in the back. Let's go ahead and meet up with our buddy Chase and check it out. Sounds good. We are two separate businesses. We're Art and Clay on Main as well as Square 7. What's most important about us baseline is that we are all nonprofit. 
And so we're owned by Fairfield County and we're partnered with the uh, Fairfield Board of Developmental Disabilities. Part of our mission is to hire adults with disabilities and we also double as an accessible art studio for adults with disabilities. So Monday through Wednesday we have our artists come in and they create artwork. So like all of the artwork, all of the canvases and a lot of the sculptures you see hanging around the place are done by our artists. And like I said, we're all non-profit so anything that comes in from the community we try and disperse back out whether it's buying new um, art supplies for our artists or catering events through our coffee house. So Chase, what makes Art in Crayon, Maine so different from other places along the ceramic trail? We are a paint your own ceramic art studio. So you can come on in and we have this square that you can paint and we'll fire it for you. And then about a week, week and a half later, we get it back to you. It's a really great thing to do with your kids or even if like adults want to come in with their friends and bring a bottle of wine and hang out and have a good cute date night. It's really cool. We also have our coffee shop. So we have Stops Coffee based out of Grandview, Ohio. It's really good local coffee roaster. So our cappuccinos are actually real cappuccinos. Our macchiatos are real macchiatos. And what about those that are experienced with clay? Is it entirely painted yourself or can people make their own projects here? We have glass fusion, wet clay where you can hand build. We also have three throwing wheels that you can um, use if you're if you're a skilled well versed on the subject any resource that we have is yours and we're always happy to help and, and cater to whatever you need and yeah it's a really great program we have oh hey wait a minute julie while we're here do you want to stop by the decorative arts center of ohio i think it's just up the street oh that's a good idea okay let's go It may not have as much clay as some of the other stops on the ceramic trail, but the Decorative Arts Center of Ohio is arguably one of the best places to purchase decorative art pieces for your home. While you're in Lancaster, make sure to check out these pieces and maybe take some home from the gift shop. But just remember that parking is in the back. Zanesville Museum of Art, home of the Zanesville Prize for Contemporary Ceramics. I don't know about you, Julie, but I'm hoping that we strike it rich in this place. Well, we might not, but somebody will. The grand prize winner will take home $20,000. Wow, that sounds awesome. Let's go check that out as well as some of the uh, historic Roseville pieces. The Zanesville Museum of Art, in addition to hosting the Zanesville Prize for Contemporary Ceramics, having a, an extensive collection of American art pottery from the major Zanesville art pottery companies such as Weller, Roseville, and J.B. Owens Pottery Company, um, in addition to many other lesser known companies. They also have just a, a strong collection of ceramic arts, both mo modern through, through uh, more historical varieties. We also are really proud to have an encyclopedic collection that's on permanent display throughout the year with changing exhibitions, some focus on Ohio arts. We also have a wide variety of artwork from throughout the world, including China, Japan, and of course Europe. We have an old historical room interior from England. And there's, there's quite a few real treasures and gems here that are, are just really worth taking the time to investigate. And here we are at Clay Center of Ohio in Roseville, the final destination on our ceramic trail trip. With over a quarter mile of hiking trails, this center has way more to offer than just clay. But of course, you don't want to miss the opportunity to stop in and see one of the many rooms of historic pieces. Let's go talk to Dale about some of those pieces. The Clay Center started as the Ohio Ceramic Center. And um, it started shortly after the Pottery Festival to commemorate the many potteries that existed in Crooksville, Roseville, and Zanesville and the surrounding region. I think this is a nice place to stop because we have a large collection that shows the diversity of pottery that was and is made in the area. And also we have uh, knowledgeable people that can answer questions people might have about pottery making in the region. Let's go look. <laughs> Bricks were made throughout Ohio. We think we've got at least one brick from every place in Ohio that made bricks, but we certainly don't have an example of every brick that might have been made in Ohio. There are some really interesting things about bricks. The raised letters or bumps on the brick would be set 
so that those created a space between the brick and they would fill that space with coarse sand so that water could flow through the brick rather than having to have a lot of drainage off the roads like we have to have today. I've been told that in the brickyards they would differentiate bricks made by various shifts by turning one of the letters in the mold so that they could know if a shift exceeded its quota and they would be paid a bonus. On this brick, the Nelsonville block brick, you can see there's an S that's backwards and an N that's backwards. And I don't know if that was intentional, like there's some secret code in this brick, or if we just had somebody dyslexic putting <laughs> the letters in the mold. Another thing that's kind of neat about the bricks is you can see there's a brick mold there. We've got some bricks in it and you can see the fired brick is a lot smaller than what the mold was, so it's an indication of how much they would shrink. I know that we have um, records of potters working in the area as early as 1820. At some point they started to come together and work in groups in what we might call early potteries, which was more than an individual or a family working together to be more productive. Potteries would routinely have 150, 250, as many as 400 employees in this region. And they measured the production of ware at their most productive period when they were making functional stoneware by rail car load rather than individual piece. And uh, some of the people that were here probably wouldn't have considered it a pottery if it didn't turn out a rail car load a day or more. So the Dairy Barn's very excited about being part of the Southeast Ohio Ceramic Trail and partnering with all of the different collaborators along the trail. So I hope that you'll join us in traveling the ceramic trail this fall.